Section 7-2, the ellipse. So we'll look at that next shape in the conic sections. So an ellipse is the set of all points in the plane um, such that the sum of the distances. So now we're going to look at a sum rather than two pieces being equal. We're going to look at the sum of two distances um, between two different foci, which is plural for focus. So we have two fixed points, F1 and F2. These are called foci, which is plural for focus. And we have more than one. And the midpoint um, between the foci is called the center, kind of like a circle. So basically, this distance plus this distance, so a foci to a point and a foci to another, to the same point, is always the same. So if instead I go to a point on the bottom, I go F1 to the point, and then the point to F2, those add up to the same distance, no matter where I go. So here's a quick video on that. Start so we can just see the pen, we can see it spinning around, see how the strings the stay the same. Contact with the paper. So if you wanted to draw one at home, this is how you would draw it. But notice it's how those strings are staying the lips, same. Like. Not suitable for an examination situation. The string. So we have a f ellipse, right? We have the two foci, and no matter where I draw those two lines, the sum of those distances add up to the same. So the video is nice. You can watch it again. The links in the notes. Uh, but I think it just helps us visualize how we are moving around, but those pieces are staying the same. And that's how you could draw one, a perfect ellipse on paper. So let's go ahead and look at a ton of properties. Um, again, it's going to be an overwhelming amount of formulas, like parabolas, but um, we'll break it down. And I'll focus on what's most important. So there's two types. Just like parabolas, we could go horizontal or vertical. Um, the formula is going to be x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. And a will always be bigger than 1. So how I'm going to tell the difference between horizontal and vertical is which one has the bigger coefficient. So for horizontal, I have x squared over a squared. And then for a vertical one, I'm going to swap it, and y squared is over a squared. And x squared is over b squared. So whichever denominator is bigger, that tells you the direction. So we have horizontal as my graph on the left, because horizontal is my longer one. So the x's, x over x squared over a squared, tells me the x's go to a and negative a. Those are called vertices. Um, the co-vertices would be the y values. So you'll notice the y goes to b and negative b, because y squared is over b squared. And then the foci, come from the formula c squared is a squared minus b squared. So the foci will always be on the bigger axis. So for horizontal, they're on the x-axis. For vertical, they switch to 0c, and so they're on the y-axis. And then the major axis um, and minor axis I, are not super important, but the major axis is the longer one. So. Um, the major axis is the horizontal axis for the horizontal one, which is y equals 0, and the major axis for the vertical one is x equals 0, because that would be the y-axis. Um, they get mentioned occasionally. We're not going to focus on those too much. So let's focus on the top four the most, with just familiarity with major and minor. But it should make sense. Major is the bigger one. Minor is the smaller one. Um, one more formula definition, and then we'll jump into an example. So the eccentricity, kind of a messy word, E-C-C-E-N-T-R-I-C-I-T-Y of an ellipse is given by the formula E equals C over A, same C as the foci. C squared equals A squared over B squared. So this tells us a nice property on how stretched out the ellipse is, because um, you can have an ellipse that's really long, or you can have one that gets closer and closer to a circle. So if E is close to zero, then it's going to be um, 
really close to a circle. And in fact, if it actually equals zero, we have a circle. We may or may not remember, but circles where x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So if I divide by r squared, it looks just like this new ellipse formula where a and b are the same. And then as e gets bigger it get, and closer to 1, it gets more stretched out. So that can tell us a nice property about the ellipse. So let's go ahead and graph one ellipse. So example one, we have x squared over 9 equals y squared over 4 equals 1. So because x squared has the bigger coefficient, this one will be horizontal because the horizontal will be bigger. So I'm just going to bring some of those formulas over so we can start working on this. So it's a horizontal. x squared had the bigger coefficient. I'm going to copy all these formulas. All right. So what do we know? We know... Um, I like to do the vertices first. I actually find them easier than the um, focus. Um, so the vertices. Um, so since x squared is over 9, that would be 3. So the vertices would be 3, 0, and negative 3, 0. I like the co-vertices, even though the book doesn't talk about it too much, because it just tells you... So the vertices tell me left and right, but it's nice to know how far up and down. So the co-vertices come from y. So since y squared is over 4, they would be at 0, 2, and 0, negative 2. So let's go ahead and find the foci. So we need to find c squared first. So c squared will be a squared minus b squared, which is just 9 minus 4, which is 5. So c is square root 5 or negative square root 5. So those will make my foci. Um, since it's horizontal, they'll be on the x-axis. So root 5, 0 and negative root 5, 0. Eccentricity is just a nice property. It gives us an idea of is it closer to a circle or closer to a really stretched out ellipse. So E will be a, uh, C over A. Yeah, A over C. C over A. I get that mixed up. So we'll do square root 5 over A, which is 3. So we might have to approximate this just to get an idea of how close to 1 it is. So square root of 5 over 3 is about 0 0.75, 745. So it's, a little it's more on the stretched out side because it's closer to 1 than 0. And then the, the lengths of the major and the minor axis, rather than using formulas, I'm going to use the graph. So we'll see that in a second. Again, I try to avoid formulas if I can. Um, the graph will make this easy. So let's start graphing and then we'll answer that question. So let's see, the x's go out to three and negative three because it's x squared over nine. Um, let's go by every other since we have a lot of space. So I'm counting by one halves. So the x's go out to 3 and negative 3, and then the y's go to 2 and negative 2. Again, this is just coming from the denominators, and we get an ellipse. Draw it as best as you can. Cool. Um, square root of 5, what is that? That's approximately like 2.23. So the foci will be at positive and negative 2.23. So 1, 2, those are my foci, 2.23. And then what else do we need? Just the lengths of the major and minor axis. And so notice this is way easier than the formula. So the length is just the length. How far is it from here to here? So since I go from negative 3 to 3, the length would be 6. Right? You can count one, two, three, four, five, six, because I go three in each direction. 
the length of the minor would then be four, right? One, two, three, four, because we go two in each direction. So I don't think the formulas are necessary. Having too many formulas can be stressful. And that's my ellipse. Um, it should be a little bit more round, right? It's not the easiest to draw, but hopefully we get the idea.